Hello people, today we're doing a cinematography breakdown of a short narrative piece I shot with a Calgary music artist named Kayam. We're going to be going over some frames and how I went about lighting, composition, and whatnot, and then at the end I'll show the final video. Alright, so this is an interrogation room scene, and my main key light here is the Godox SL60W, uh, and that's attached to a 90 centimeter softbox with a grid attachment. And we ended up placing that uh, right far side and a little bit overhead. It would have been ideal to um, have it right overhead and that's kind of what I wanted. But unfortunately the roof was quite low and I forgot a light stand so I, I ended up getting other people to just hold up the light over top of him. But I really like this look nonetheless because it creates some Rembrandt lighting which means that there's like creates a sort of like triangle on the other side of the face and it's a technique called upstage lighting where the light is placed behind the subject basically it goes light subject camera and you'll see this technique used in a bunch of different movies uh, all the time and it just creates a very cinematic look the softbox grid worked really well in this case because he's being nicely separated from the background because that light's not spilling everywhere. And then I also placed a little battery powered Viltrox LED light on this side. And all that's doing is it's just kind of blasting into this wall here and just making it so that the wall is not completely black and there's still some shape in the room, but it's not too overpowering that so that like I'm still well separated from the background at this point. And you can see just how much dimension it's sort of created with this lighting because it's a bit brighter on this wall, then dark, then it goes bright on this side of his face, and then it's dark again, and then this wall is brighter. So it's just really created these different pockets of light and makes for, again, very cinematic looking image. All right, so this next shot was a little bit more tricky to light um, because obviously it's a wide shot with both of our subjects and I can't just put this, the softbox behind both of them uh, and then it's going to be in the frame. So what we ended up doing is placing the Godox SL60 with the softbox um, behind Albert's shoulder here. And that works well, I think, because Kaim's kind of the main subject. So I wanted him to be well lit. And it still gives uh, Albert, who's the interrogator here, it gives him a nice rim light. So he still has a bit of separation from the background. And then I just swung the uh, little LED battery powered light to this side and then shine that on the wall here and yeah I think it just creates again more depth all right so this next one is when Albert is walking in and I'm kind of going out of order here but um, it kind of shows how you can light wider and tighter shots a bit differently because in this one it's kind of the inverse of Kaim's shot it's pretty similar though softbox over here and it just kind of has that Rembrandt lighting again. But for wider and tighter shots, uh, usually it's not a huge deal if you bring in that light to be closer for the tighter shots and the audience uh, in a lot of cases can't tell the difference. So yeah, it usually works pretty well. And as long as the light is kind of on the same side of the subject here, uh, it works. And we created more depth with this wall being brighter and then it gets dark here and then bright on him and then sort of dark again, bright again, dark again. So you can see that pattern going across a lot of these different shots. As for the composition, I put, placed the camera a little bit lower uh, on a tripod uh, and this is to make the investigator just seem very powerful in this case. And it also sort of gives the point of view of Kayim sitting in the investigation chair and it shows how Albert's kind of in control at this point. All right, so we're finally moving on to a different scene here. And uh, this is right outside the cop car while Kaim's getting arrested by a cop. And um, Kaim already had uh, these cop lights, these police car lights from a different music video shoot. And those worked super well, obviously, first of all, to just make it look like it's a cop car. Uh, and also it gives him, in this case, this really nice rim light going around his whole face and uh, really outlining him. And then other than that, I had a lot of uh, little LED lights kind of higher up 
uh, to act sort of as street lights. And you can even see one that we kind of uh, left here on the car uh, in the frame. Um, luckily, the shot is pretty fast, so I don't think it's super likely that uh, you notice that it's there or that it's like a video production light, I guess, uh, as opposed to a light that's already on the car. So yeah, I put these lights high up on light stands um, so that they're kind of acting as street lamps. And then something that was really important for this shot is that I didn't want to put um, just a bunch of lights like right in front of the subject. And I feel like this is a problem or a mistake that beginners would make a lot. They just put a light like flashing right like on him here. Um, but that's gonna create this very flat image. So it's better to put them in this case kind of behind him or beside him to still keep that contrast intact. But I kind of messed up because even this lighting does look a little bit flat just because of how low light the scene really was at the time. So there is still like a light short sort of in front of him. Yeah, I think it's kind of coming from this side and it's a little bit flat for me. I do wish that I just kept the scene a little more contrasty, but yeah, at the same time, kind of wanted people to be able to see that he was getting arrested and getting handcuffs put on and stuff. We ended up shooting these scenes actually right beside um, some train tracks where there was basically you know, no cars and people there. Um, and yeah, this worked pretty well because you don't really want to have like cop car lights on just like a normal street. It's obviously going to be a little bit alarming. So yeah, we found this nice area that did already have a little bit of ambient lighting. I, th I do think that this light you can kind of see that's on this tree here. That was from an actual uh, street lamp kind of nearby. But um, luckily we're nice and isolated in this spot. Here's our waiting room where our criminals are basically waiting to be interrogated. And I placed Kayam in the corner here, and I figure that kind of draws your eyes to him the most. It would have been ideal to have um, five different people so that it's really like pleasing to the eye and, and just like really points to him. But I think still with the corner, it works. Um, no cinematographer, uh, at least that I know, I think, likes to work with white walls because they're really boring uh, plus they bounce light like crazy so it's not always ideal and it's not always the easiest to create shape uh, with your lighting and your subjects uh, but this was kind of one of our only options in the space we had so we made it work as for the lighting i had the godox sl60 uh, just bare with the uh with the like can attachment thing and that's just blasting into this, into a white wall uh, behind this that you can't see. And that sort of gives all of our subjects uh, some pretty natural looking light actually. Um, and that is one plus of having white walls is that if you just blast a light like in the opposite direction at a wall, you can kind of act as a huge softbox. And it, I kind of use the motivated light from that was coming from this window because there's a window to this door and they're like windows right beside that uh, where the sunlight was kind of pouring into yeah so we had to make it work with the white walls and I think we did all right this is a really interesting shot here um, I really like the wide angle look uh, for this shot it really puts you in Kaim's shoes I feel like uh, as he's being pushed into the cop car so I find the composition really works well with the, I believe is at about 18 millimeters on the Sigma 18 to 35. And then for lighting, I believe my friend Josh put a little aperture MC uh, under this, or like kind of in the compartment uh, with this door here. So then that's kind of filling in some of these shadows here. But I feel like it still actually looks really natural, but I feel like it gives him a lot more shape rather than just being like super dark. Other than that, it was just like some LEDs uh, outside of the door here but they don't make a huge difference here um, because most of our lighting is coming from the cop car lights actually which are planted right near the kind of dashboard of the car here which is just giving us this perfect like half face lit up sort of look here uh, on the far side and again this is like really a technique that they would use in movies where it is that far side key 
which creates a super moody look. We can't see half his face. I think for next time, maybe it would have been nice to get some sort of like eye light so that you can still kind of make out some of those features. Um, but man, just this like super moody look. So I really like how the police lights worked out for this shot. And this shot just has so much depth to it uh, with the whole car being lit up with these lights and then his hair being super dark. And then we have like even some little ambient street lights in the back here. And yeah, just this whole atmosphere. So yeah, so for this project, I was mainly using the Lumix GH5 and the Sigma 18 to 35 and then the Canon Nifty 50, 50 millimeter f1.8. And yeah, just a super fun project to work on. Really got to experiment with a lot of new techniques for lighting, including a softbox, uh, which I actually got like right before the shoot and just worked out super well. <laughs> Kyle, next please. So yeah guys, I hope you found something helpful out of this video. It's really exciting to be able to share uh, this journey with you guys and um, learn along with you hopefully and just continuously improve on my lighting and cinematography and all of that. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new and if you want to check out more tutorials I've made then you can check out the playlist right up here and you can check out Fuck.